Hey, what's up, Black Knight Nation? This is Sal Intrudinato here, and we have a familiar face returning to the podcast. The Old Grads podcast is, is back, and we have Steve Anderson, two-year Army football captain, returning. Steve, where have you been? And glad to have you back. And like you were, were texting back and forth, this is the OG's podcast, right? We did this stuff right. before podcasts became popular. I think we were doing this stuff years, years and years ago, man. And now we're back. Yeah. We're reunited. Yeah, I think we started on SoundCloud in 2015, 2016, Sal. So just, just talking, talking my passion, talking Army football. So uh, it's good to be back. Uh, glad to see Black Knight Nation. I saw – uh, some merch came out, so uh, definitely got some some shirts waiting for me when I back home. Yeah, it's it's awesome. We were able to get some uh, Black Knight Nation t shirts out. You can find them on our website, and we're um, actually this is what the um, I I call it a gray shirt. They call it something else. Um, they they come in uh, gray and black, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be getting some coffee cups up uh, cups out there. Some. A uh, wall flag, some hooded sweatshirts. Hopefully, this is just the beginning. But uh, man, it's, it's great to have you back. And uh, man, we were talking a little bit um, before the podcast started about the big win for Army against Georgia State and how close you were to the proximity of that victory, but kind of didn't didn't join the Ar the Black Knight Nation at the game. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, uh, unfortunately I have, and uh, when I'm a visitor in the stands, Army's 0-6, um, uh, that's their record. So uh, I'm right down here at Fort Benning. I'm doing some training. Uh, so uh, I you know, might have had the opportunity to go to the game, and, uh, you know, I just um, fell off on a good foot, you know, and, you know, I, did, I, I took the minus two all day when they had uh, when they had Georgia State's two. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's that's an easy win right there. So. Um, I felt confident going into the game. Uh, I just didn't want to jinx it. So I enjoyed watching the the, the show of domination uh, from my couch. Yeah, you know what? I was on a podcast yesterday that actually was streamed today, a Chase Thomas podcast, and he wanted to talk about the Army Georgia State game. Uh, Georgia State game, and he was like, "Man, I think that was one of the upsets of the week." And I'm like, "Man, I, I this Army team had so much returning players back from a nine win team." Steve, I don't know why they were underdogs in that game in the first place. And I said, I, I said on the podcast, that's not an upset to Army football fans, you know. And the the, right. the people that have followed this team under Jeff Munkin in recent years, that's certainly not an upset. It's not like they went and beat like a uh, Central Florida or Cincinnati or you know on the road. Maybe that would be that would be an upset. But Georgia State, you know, I get you know what? Maybe because a couple years ago they they lost down there. Um, maybe that factored into the thinking, but I mean, it was, a uh... no, absolutely. It could have, it could have now Georgia state, look, uh, Georgia state didn't play well. Um, and that's obviously part of how army just kept the pressure on the entire game. Uh, plus Georgia state had some key players out, um, due to the, the COVID mitigation. So the, the air, uh, could be let out of, uh, kind of the, the machine there if, if, you're starting go-to wide receiver, and then you're, you're stud on defense. I think they had a couple studs on defense that play, so the heartbeats could have been gone a little bit. But you know, I don't care how many players, uh, how many good play, you know, one or two guys isn't going to make up for 30 points. So um, regardless, um, I think from the get-go, you know, we forced a turnover immediately, and then it was, uh, it was the Army goes rolling along from there on out. Yeah, I mean, that was a big four, four plays in. You know, the defense is off the field, giving the offense the ball, and then um, a march down the field. You look at the stats, I don't think the stats tell the complete story. You know, Army didn't rush for 300 or 400 yards in this game. They rushed in the 250s, but they were so efficient on offense. You know, man, 10 out of 16 on third down, 3 out of 3 on fourth down. I mean, when you can move the chains like that and get into the end zone. Steve, their first three touchdowns were on third and goal. You know, uh, we're on third and goal plays. So, and then they had the fourth and goal play on the fourth touchdown. So they were, you know, they were pretty efficient in what they did uh, on Saturday. Well, yeah. Anytime you know you're sixty, you know, seventy percent on third down, uh, that's gonna that's gonna make any coach happy. Uh, but you know, it's hard to rush for three hundred yards when you're in great field position all day. When you only have fifty to sixty yards to get to the end zone, or or you have fifty to six yard drives. Um, you know, it, it kind of, again, doesn't tell the story. The stats don't tell the story about 
you know, we had great field position most of the game. Um, and, you know, the defense was just flying around. You know, I love watching our defense. So, um, it was good to see those guys get after it. And uh, big shout out to my big shout out to my boys who designed on uh, practice squads uh, two weeks ago. Um, I'll see them uh, get that opportunity. So um, it's really cool seeing Army football kind of continue their footprint um, within the NFL. Yeah, and I think you know you look at Ali. He's he's got his place in the NFL. Uh, probably for as long as he wants to play with, with the Ravens. And then you have, you know, guys who Brett Toth, a tackle makes the Eagles 53 man roster. And then, you know, guys like Elijah Riley, Cole Christensen and John Radigan, they were signed right back to their teams, the same squads that, you know, released them the day before. And I know that those guys are in the plans of, they're in the plans of their teams. You know, that, that's just something I know. Radigan uh, only played one preseason game, but that's sec- and really one half. And Pete Carroll was pretty impressed with him. I mean, I don't know if you got to see Radigan play in that. And he played against Cole Christensen, two Army guys playing in a preseason game, playing yeah. middle linebacker, your position, inside linebacker, middle linebacker, your position when you played. And at the end of the game, posing for a picture. And uh, uh, it's just it's just great to see. And um, you look at this year's team, right? And Nolan Cockrell, their nose tackle, is a guy that just, you know, I think that definitely has a chance to play in the NFL. A lot of people do. I know Ross Tucker, who calls the games for CBS uh, Sports Network, think he thinks he has a place in the NFL uh, next year. And Steve, Andre Carter, um, their outside linebacker against Georgia State. Three sacks in the opener, 6'7", we'll say 250 right now. He's been listed at 265. I've never seen – Question for you: Has Army ever had a player say in the last twenty years with a, a guy that with his size and his skill to rush the passer? I don't recall anybody. I mean, you know, you might say back in the day Ali was that size, but Ali was more of a. a I don't know. Ali didn't really have that chance on defense too much. He was. I'll tell you, uh, what the kid reminds me of is um, a combination of Vicky Guinea off the edge with Josh McNary type tenacity and type, uh, kind of uh, motor. Um, you know, Vic, Vic was every bit of 6'7". Uh, big, played that played that traditional DN, not outside linebacker, that big DN, 6'7", 260, 270. Um, and then Josh played opposite of him, just using his athletic ability at, at 230, um, playing that that, that, uh, that quick, we call it, but switched outside linebacker in a – in an outside formation, uh, like outside linebacker formation. So um, I, I swear, I, I, when I saw that kid make that first sack, I did not realize how big he was until the camera like pan, panned onto him. And he was just uh, literally everybody else was like bottom of the helmet. And I was like, oh, that's, that guy's a giant. So he's got some mid. So really cool uh, watching Carter uh, come off the edge all day. It got me, you know, I kind of tend to just always watch the middle linebacker, watch the middle. See how the the defensive tackles and uh, you know fit up on on the defensive scheme, but definitely cool to watch that 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 young player get after it. His three sacks. I'm not sure if anybody even touched him on his, on his rush. He was that elusive, and he had that get up off the line of scrimmage. And talking to Nate Woody uh, today in his uh, press conference um, availability, he was a wide receiver in high school apparently. Um, and then I know he went to a prep school in Connecticut before he went to West Point, and um, he's a Texas kid, uh, originally did he, a Texas did he go to, kid. When he, did he go to Milford? I want to say like Cheshire maybe or something like that. Okay. Um, I have to look it up real quick, but I one of those. He didn't go to Milford. I know he didn't go to Milford. And, I mean, just, um, you know, I, Woody said that, and I asked Coach Munkin even after the game, this guy's going to create matchup problems all season long, I think, with opponents no matter – really who you play because he's just really hard to block. It seems like. No, I, um, you know, that's what, it's what you hope for as a defensive coordinator is you got, um, a guy that's going to have to, so, so it's going to have to be negotiated with, whether it's, a uh, you know, a slide from the offensive line or a tight end in that formation or you're moving your back to, to kind of help with any, anything off the edge to move to that side. So it's, you know, I think I think we all saw either the the matchup or you know some future success coming from 
uh, Carter off the edge because, you know, people are going to have to scheme for him now. Um, you know, at, at least, um, you know, if, especially if he duplicates uh, that performance. Yeah, and you look at um, – he had a big game last year against Georgia Southern. He had an interception. I think he blocked like an extra point or a field goal. It was, I think it was one of his first starts in his career. So it's not like he just came out of nowhere, right? But now you see what he can really be. And you know what? You look at this Nate Woody defense, Steve. They had a full year. They had a spring to install stuff, and they had a preseason to install stuff. And now you look at how aggressive they are. And I think that, you know, people are – people we're saying, Hey, can they be better than last year? Right. Because they were number one in the nation yards allowed uh, per game, but they had all the they had eight or nine guys back th that started last year. And yeah, Radigan graduated. Right. And they lost maybe uh, uh, some play and some leadership with Amadeo West, but man, that first game is pretty impressive. Um, this week, Western Kentucky uh, offense can certainly showed it could put up some points in its first game against Tennessee Martin. Now, Tennessee Martin's defense is nowhere near Army's defense, right? Yeah. And here's my thing. Here's something I, I wanted to touch on while we were talking because we both have a lot of knowledge of the program, right? We, we both go back a little bit. This secondary for Army, right, the guys that it has back, all four guys. Now, I was going to say, is this the best secondary that Army's had in a long, long time? Now, when I think about that, right, I think about Elijah Riley, his his four years, right? That's a guy who's playing in the NFL right now. That's an NFL player playing corner. And then you look at who played opposite him. Mike Reynolds was really steady playing opposite opposite um, Elijah. And then you had Ryan England back there in um, you know, mix of Xavier Moss and Jalen McClinton back when they started this winning, this winning these winning years here. But man, this secondary can cover. They, they can make plays. Look at Jabari Moore's interception there near the goal line at the end of the first half, turning point, right? I mean, that guy is – that guy's if there's a play to be made in the secondary, he's there. Broughton and Cunningham are really solid, and they're really good leaders. And I think they're maybe sometimes get a little underrated – get under the radar a little bit, those guys. Those guys are excellent. Um, what do you think? Uh, so, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the coolest thing about watching – uh, the team yesterday was, uh, you know, yes, they all came up, fired up, first football season of, like, you know, football again, right? Fans in the stands, everybody's excited. Um, but the technical the technical discipline out of the DB, so I forget which – it was earlier in the game where um, – I forget who was – who was, uh, but it was basically a, a standard slant into the end zone from Georgia State. And the corner, I mean – just technically outside in, wanted him to run the slant, put his hand out, extended the arm, bat the ball, secured the back of the jersey, same time, um, just in case he missed the ball. I mean, it was like literally what you teach DBs how to do, how to play a slant. And yeah. I, that play, to me specifically, it wasn't like a highlight reel, wasn't an interception, uh, but it just showed me just how technically sound uh, the defensive backs are. Um, and it's just, uh, it was incredible to watch all day because, you know, Georgia State threw the ball trying to keep up with, with Army, trying to put points on the board. And it just, there was, there was just no way to, um, there was no holes. Yeah. And the guy that you were talking about who had the, um, the knockdown there in the end zone is Isaiah Morris. And he's a guy who plays behind like Jabari Moore and Julian McDuffie. He's a guy who's like their third or fourth cornerback who's really come on. They, they talked a lot about him in the weight room, making gains in the weight room. And now you see him play. He played a lot of the second half in that game. Yeah. And they didn't have to play Jabari Moore and Julian McDuffie the whole game. They got um, Cam Jones in there. Uh, also at corner. And we saw Cam Jones last year make a ton of plays. I think he had two interceptions last year when he played. I mean, maybe to say it's the best secondary that they've had in a while, maybe it's definitely deep. It's definitely one of the deepest yeah. secondaries they've had in a while. And I don't think uh, when you're playing a guy, um, I don't know if I pronounce in the, the Western Kentucky's quarterback's last name, uh, right? Bailey Zapp or Zappy. When you're playing him, seven touchdowns he had last week, right, against um, Tennessee uh, Martin, they obviously we know they need to get that pass rush going, right, against some make them rush throws like they did with Quad Brown of Georgia Georgia State. If they can get any pressure on uh, on the Western Kentucky quarterback 
And then the secondary, like you said, has the ability to read where they're go- where he's going to throw and make those plays. I mean, a couple defensive turnovers, and that's really all that this offense really needs, I think, to, to win this game on Saturday. Yeah, Western Kentucky is coming off a high, right? They did what they were supposed to do. They, they uh, torched uh, an inferior opponent. Um, they're going to be riding high coming into West Point, coming into Mikey Stadium. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I was actually at the game a couple years ago um, uh, when Army lost to West Kentucky. So, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, you know going to be a showcase of what this quarterback can do against this defense. Um, our defense is going to be confident. We just came out of a, a strong performance as well. Uh, definitely expect them to test our defensive backs early, right? Because, you know, we're talking about how, how deep we are. Uh, we're not the only ones talking about it. Everybody's noticed it, right? They got the same film that we got to see. Um, you know, they're they're going more in depth and they're looking at steps, all that stuff. So uh, they're definitely going to come out and, and try us. I couldn't agree more, Sal. You got to, you know, I'm a big believer that you keep the pressure on and you make the quarterback make decisions in the shortest amount of time. And, um, you know, the bottom line is, is when – you're making quarterback thruster throws. Um, they're going to make a bad decision eventually, and, and you just have to be able to capitalize off of that. So uh, definitely coming off the end of Carter and, and up the middle with the, uh, the linebackers will will make him have to make split decisions. And then, you know, hopefully our quarterbacks, our corners and uh, safeties can, can kind of capitalize off that. Yeah, and you get what you get Eric Eric Smith on the blitz up the gut. You can bring Malcolm Morrison off the edge, the opposite edge of Carter if you want to. Um, you can you can get a Bonzu got some pretty good put Corbina Bonzu got some pretty good push up front on um on Saturday against Georgia State. I mean, and they it seems like um you know they Steve they threw um Brian Burton, a freshman linebacker, into the, into a starting role there uh, at, at Georgia State first college game. First college snap, he's there on the sidelines assisting on a tackle. I've said this multiple times on almost every every time I've talked about this game, but that says a lot about the coaching. That says a lot about the guys that they're bringing in um, and, and the scheme. I mean, I think they – maybe you could talk about this, but I think that with Nate Woody, I think that the assignments are pretty – they're not too um, complex. They're pretty simple in what – you have to do on each play, and I think that makes it easier for the guys to play faster. Yeah, I, I think that's – especially when you have young guys, um, you know, what you want to do is give them easy – like three easy things, right? You want to make their footwork easy. You want to make their key easy. And then you, you want to make their read easy. So just the three basic things that you got to do to start any play is your alignment, you know, your, your feet, eyes, and then – where it's going to take you. So, uh, you know, that's how we played in the, in the double Eagle flex. Uh, basically, you know, for me, feet at seven eyes on whatever, and it'll take you to the play. Uh, I imagine, you know, as fast as we were playing and just the the guys get it. I mean, there weren't, um, you know, I probably saw maybe three or four, um, blown assignments, uh, on Saturday, um, where it was obvious that, uh, somebody had just missed an assignment, right? Their eye, their eyes weren't in the right spot, um, or uh, you know they, they misaligned or something like that. So there weren't maybe a handful, which is pretty common, uh, you know, especially for a guy who like, I like. I like watching defense. You know, I don't watch the ball. I don't watch Georgia State what they do. I watch like what the defense is reacting to. So um, it's just pretty cool. I think we haven't talked about this, and and this is something that was talked about a lot in the preseason. Um, Four captains on the team, right? You'll like you'll like it all four on defense. You know, all four on defense. All four guys are returning starters on defense. Um, and they were asked, you know, how do you, um, uh, you know, the responsibilities? Who who has what responsibilities with the team? Since there's no offensive uh, guys, right? And we know on the Army football team, right? I mean, at West Point in general, all these guys are being trained to be leaders, right? So there's, it's not like there's no nobody vocal on the offense. I know that you know Ty here, Tyler is a guy who's vocal. The quarterback, he's vocal on the offense. Um, the, the offensive linemen, Noah Knapp and Dean Powell, are seniors. Guys have been around who have seen game action early in their careers. They're they're vocal. So I mean. But just to have that, the four guys on defense being captains tells you about what kind of um, talent and what kind of um, voice they bring back on that side of the ball, right? 
Yeah, no, and I, you know, I always think it's that's a funny question, like, oh, who's responsible for it as the captain? Like, you know, whose lane is what? Um, you know, it was one of the one of the coolest things that uh, one of my mentors, Colonel G. Hulka, who's Army football player, served 33 years, was our head OR of our football team. Uh, still one of my big mentors today. I, you know, I just came from Fort Campbell. He lives in uh, Eastern Kentucky, so um, you know, st- kept in touch with him. There is. You know, the hardest thing about being, uh, you know, uh, a team captain on the football team is peer leadership, right? And that's, that's what everybody says is peer leadership is always the hardest kind of leadership. So, you know, how do you lead your peers? Um, and those guys obviously thought those four guys were the right people. And that's probably because all those four guys had the right kind of relationships to influence or motivate or persuade or, or lead on all sides of the ball. You know, those guys play on special teams, so that's no – you know, it's no, um, you know, they, they can count a special team captain too if you want to really divvy it up yeah. as well. So um, the, the biggest thing is, you know, there's obviously a leader of the offense, right? They're not on the field. So there's an informal leader. That's how Prince Steelman was for us as a sophomore. Like he wasn't, he wasn't a senior captain. He wasn't a junior captain, but he was the sophomore that, that led that offense, um, you know, and, um, you know, it, I think, yeah, the title's cool and all, um, you know, it was cool to be the captain, but it, it's, it's, you know, it's more important that they're holding each other accountable on each side of the ball and they know who to go to on the offensive side and, uh, you know, some accountability needs to be held. Yeah, it's pretty key to note that this is a team vote. The coaches don't pick the captains. This is a team vote. So they got the respect of their peers. Those are the guys. And if you watch this team play on the Saturday, you could see there was um, a laser focus with them. They, they did not flinch in any posi- on any plays. They were ready to go, and they were ready. Um, the, the experienced guys who might have went down to Georgia State a couple years ago, and it didn't go well for them. You know, they were probably playing with a little edge themselves, just like, you know, Western Kentucky, this Western Kentucky game coming up um, on Saturday. There are a couple, there are a bunch of guys on this team who played in that game two years ago. It didn't go well for them. And uh, now we talked about in the past, I mean, how how Army plays at home, how Army plays at Mikey. And now you got the 20th anniversary of 9 11. You got the first game that fans are back. You know, yes, they had the cadets in the stands last year and a handful of fans. Uh, too, but I mean, this is going to feel like a, a college, real college f- football home game. Steve, I think they're twenty six and four in their last thirty games at Mikey Stadium. I believe they've won ten in a row at Mikey, all eight last year during pandemic situations, which is pretty impressive, yeah. you know. And back to back Navy and Air Force, so I mean, that's anytime, enough. Snake. Yeah, anytime you can talk about how hard it is to win at any place, regardless of what the actual record is like, or if there's a, they just have good history of winning at that place. It, it, it makes it hard as an opponent, you know, if you know, Oh, they won the last 26 of 30 here, or, you know, they haven't lost in 10 games since 2019. They haven't lost. Um, you know, it's, it's something that goes in your mind as a, as a player. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Those seniors are going to love it. I mean, man, Mikey stadium, Saturday, full stands, uh, beautiful weather. It's going to be great. You know, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It's my 10-year anniversary. Unfortunately, I'm stuck down in Fort Benning training. Um, but uh, I know a lot of my buddies will be there. You know, the 2010 Bowl team and, the you know, a lot of the seniors from the 2011 class. So, uh, you know, I, I know it's just going to be a blast. Uh, it's, it's, and I'm going to get all the tech. So we said, hey, you know, how's it, how's it going? Uh, and, uh, I'm just, I'm looking forward to watch the game, um, and share from it, from my buddies and, and how it goes. I really hope maybe they do something. I know it's, it's not 11. So, I mean, they'll probably have some halftime, you know, halftime show uh, dedicated to that, but I really hope that if there's going to be a bunch of those 2010, um, you know, players from, from the team being at that game, I hope they acknowledge that. Because I mean, we were, I was talking on a podcast last week with J- Doug Chadwick, who you know is an ex Army football player who was involved in the Center uh, for Enhanced Performance at West Point. And he kind of mentored, a, I, I think, your team, right? In 2010, I think he was involved in mentoring your team and getting that winning mentality within the, the, the football brotherhood, so to speak. And um, 
I think that sometimes I, so that team goes a little bit under the radar with all this recent success that Army's had. And uh, it would be nice um, for people to recognize that team. That team got – you guys had some really – you, great memories from that team in, in 2010, no doubt. I mean, I, I have great memories from covering that team from when going yeah, down. A, the you, know, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's been a while since anything like that was around um, Army football. Uh, so it was special. Um, you know, the year before, we were one game away from a bowl game. We only went five and seven and had a chance to beat Nate or – had a chance to compete against Navy uh, to go to a bowl game. So a lot of, you know, kind of ended the year, my junior year, you know, I was obviously out with an ACL there, but I mean, that game was close. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, the bowl game in 2010, which was awesome. So, um, yeah, uh, Doug Chadwick and Major Tillman, uh, two very awesome CEP uh, performance uh, guys, uh, really c- convinced me like that's how, that's how professionals do it, right? The game within the game. Uh, luckily, I had a good mentor in, in high school that taught me about imagery and stuff like that. So I was, I was bought in from from day one on on that stuff, and I still use it in my infantry units today. You know, we still use the Army Wellness Center um, and stuff to try to just find any kind of edge to increase um, your ability, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, or or emotional. So um, definitely love Center for Enhanced Performance. I'm Every year I try to figure out how I can work that into a master's degree so I go back to be the CEP guy uh, at West Point. So, we're, 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 I mean, that's that would be the ultimate, right, to get back to West Point and work with the, work with the football team, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically when I hit like 18, 19 year when I'm ready to retire. That's what I want to do. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying my, my post and uh, – all my assignments so far. So the wife's enjoying it. Um, you know, the boys are great. So uh, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Well, maybe we could bring up, um, we could touch on one of your mentors, uh, another one of your mentors coming back to West Point and uh, Ben Kotwika, um, yeah. guy who was a captain of the 96 team that, that won 10 games. And uh, he was your defensive coordinator at the prep school, right? And now he's the director of uh, player development. They announced that on Jeff Munkin's uh, radio show last week. Uh, that that was a surprise to me. I don't know if you were you had a little bit of a a scoop uh, before that uh, before the show, but I mean that that yeah. to have a guy like Ben Kotwika on staff at West Point, a guy who not only played for Army, who coached you know at Army Prep and coached what like fifteen years in the NFL. Um, yeah, wow. I mean- when he left, I mean, he left Army Prep in he left Army Prep in 2007 or 2008 for the Jets. So it's been since then. Uh, so at least 15 years, yeah. Uh, yeah, my first true mentor. Um, uh, I I mean, I, a lot of people say we remind you know I remind people of him and I played like he did and uh, you know I wore 44 at prep and he was number 44 so. I think that's what started it, and we're both kind of undersized, uh, undersized linebackers that played in the so. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was funny because right after, um, right before it was officially announced, all I got was, um, you know, uh, I was next to, hey, what's next? We were texting about. Uh, I think he was with Ali or something, or, or not with Ali. He was something, um, and. He just texted me, hey, I'm going home. And I was like, I immediately thought Chicago Bears because, you know, he's from Illinois and uh, he's been in the NFL um, and uh, he never responded. And then, uh, you know, I hear that he's a director of player development. And uh, I just was like, God, there is not, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm ecstatic for the program. They don't, you know, a lot of those guys who don't know Ben, Benny K. Um, don't know what they're getting. He's absolutely just a phenomenal motivator, coach, teacher, mentor, um, advisor, big brother. Um, literally, you know, I, I, you know he, he's one of the reasons uh, I ended up staying at Army Prep School. Um, probably the biggest reason I stayed at Army Prep um, and continued to, um, you know, see if the Army was this Army thing. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. But as an 18 year old, 19 year old, um, when all you want to do is play football and they've got you doing a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't want to be doing. 
Um, you know, you, you question whether or not you want to or not. Um, and, uh, you know, he just brought me back and, uh, and told me what it's, what it's about to be in the brotherhood. So, uh, super excited. The players are going to be so super excited. The program is better for it. Uh, congrats coach. Um, and, uh, look forward to hearing. So. It's kind of the role he plays r- right now with the player development side, right? He's kind of that that mentor, and gets you know the the younger guys who, like you said, may it may be tough at first at West Point. Um, that that's a that's a great p- spot, a great person to go to. Um, we must add here, he's a he's a former guest on the Black Knight Nation Old Grads podcast, Ben yeah, Kavika. He is, yeah, he, he is. Have- uh, last last year, about last this time last year, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we had him on, you know, we, we were, maybe we were thinking what was going to be his next move and who would have known back then that it was going to be back to West Point. And, um, man, you look at, I guess he takes over for Ray Maples. Ray Maples was in that position um, be, prior to uh, Ben being hired. And then you look at, you know, you have, so now you have Mike VD as your fullbacks coach. You have Ben Kotwika as your director of player development. And I'm sure, like, there's guys who former football players. I I talked to a bunch of them. You know who I talked to? Um, uh, a podcast recently, Ryan England. Right, he's out in Hawaii. He's serving in the army out in Hawaii. And he's like, when he gets out, he probably will do the five years of active duty. And then after he gets out, one of the first things he wants to do is maybe be a football coach. And I don't know if that. Who knows where that starts out? But maybe that maybe will lead back to West Point. And I know that when I was covering that te- the team, Ryan England. Jay Bateman was the defensive coordinator back then. He said like Ryan Engel like was having another coach on the field. And that's what those, those safety guys, those really good safeties will be like, right? Steve having another coach on the field. So who knows? I mean, it, I don't know. Like, I know that like, I guess the black Knight nation and the army grads would like to see more, um, maybe former army players involved in the program, you know, maybe Navy and air force have a little bit more, but they're not winning like army is either right now. So at the rate that army's winning at right now too. So Munkin yeah, has I mean- the recipe. Yeah, and uh, I think I mean, uh, it, it kind of goes back to timing. You know, just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great coach. And just because you weren't a great player doesn't mean you're not going to be a great coach. Um, so, you know, and, and I think all the, the players that truly love the sport um, see themselves, co- you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching my single flag football team this year, and it's going to be just as intense as if I was number 50 on the field. I'll tell you that right now, Sal, okay? So... <laughs> uh they're gonna they're gonna win all right <laughs> and uh so um you know and i actually um i got the opportunity to speak with uh one of the high school football coaches uh, at cheyenne mountain high school and he offered me to come and be the linebackers coach this year when i get back to colorado Springs. so you know i'm starting my you know m- to see if high school football coaching is something you know i always thought you know whenever i'm done playing army um you know i'll i'll go be a coach somewhere uh, and, uh, you know, I just love it. I think it's important that the right people are coaching uh, young, mu- young men how to be men um, on and off the field, uh, you know, great football players and great men. So, um, you know, I, I think it's great. Coach Kawik is, you know, in many cases the right guy for the job. And, you know, of course, Mike's had a great time there. You know, he's, a, you know, another great, you know, he's a big brother of mine. You know, he was a senior when I was a freshman there. So, um Love seeing those guys do, do uh, be a part of the program. Yeah, and I, I'll just mention this right now. I know, I think before, like during the hiring, after uh, Coach Ellerson was let go and they were looking to hire, um, you know, the next coach, I know that Ben Kotwika's name was out there. And I know a lot of grads, that was their pick pretty much, one of their top picks. I don't know how it worked out with him in West Point. I don't really, that's not for really – me, me to discuss, but now for him to, to get the opportunity to, Hey, you're, you're now you're on, now you're on st- staff at West point and now you can, you can help out and make a difference. And I know that, that there's certainly, you know, this, there's a passion with him with army football, just like yourself. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's, it's unmatched, you know? So yeah. to, we, we, talk, we, we already talked about how, how just getting him, you know, at, on that staff is, is a, is a great, it's a great job by Jeff Muckin to do that. And um, we'll see how it pans out. I'm sure that, you know, this, this season, you know, Steve, this schedule, right. It's, it's a little, it's a lot tougher than last year because last year you were piecing it together, right. You were piecing the Abilene yep. Christians together. You were piecing games. together. You didn't know who you were playing sometimes a week out. You had a the, uh, really, the, only- I think uh, the, the Bishop Sycamores, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would have been something. That would be something, you know, so. 
I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that that's the uh, high sc- high school football game of the week, isn't it? Or <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. that ESPN got 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 uh, got that one. Got got zinged on that one. Um, but this schedule is is interesting, right? I mean, your first four, three out of four at home. You already won the road game, and uh, you know you'll get a test at Ball State probably. They won the MAC last year. And then it's Wisconsin who uh, stu- stumbled at the beginning to Penn State. You know, Penn State's a ranked team. There's no shame in Wisconsin. That's a competitive game. Uh, was really was close, pretty close. And so now you get you get Wisconsin after Ball Ball State. That's kind of the middle of your season. And then you still have the Service Academy games to play, plus a good Liberty team. So I mean, this this schedule will be it will, will, will challenge Army, a really good, experienced Army team that you know. I mean, nine wins last season. You know, you gotta go. You gotta go up. You don't want to. You don't want to be slide down, right? You want to build on that season. I think that man, if they can can get this going, and I've always talked about this, and we talked about this. That win over a big Power Five team, right? I think that's what's missing. I always say that's what's missing on Jeff Munkin's yeah. resume. He's had. He's now has three Commander in Chiefs trophies in the last four games, right? uh, four years, right? Um, really close at Oklahoma. Really close at Michigan. Um, yeah. Wisconsin is a test, so. Yeah, no, uh, and we've been right there, right? Um, right there in those, those Power 5 games, so it's not like it's, um, you know, it's just another game in the schedule. Um, so, yeah, as you look over the schedule um, in its entirety, it definitely, you know, makes you, you know, see that it's a pretty tough schedule, but I think the most important thing for our players is, look, West Kentucky tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Go to West Kentucky tomorrow. Right. Worry about Ball State. You got Ball State next week. Um, and you just kind of hit those 50 meter targets. Let the coaches, you know, let the, let the staff worry about, you know, scheming and, and how we're going to prepare and everything like that. Just read your key, you know, line right, read your keys right, focus on one game at a time. You can't ever go wrong with that approach. Not in the football, at least not in football. You know, you just focus on one game a week. Um, and you'll be set, set up for success. So uh, I'm, I'm interested to see, um, you know, you know, we're going to be seeing the ball pass a lot this weekend in Western Kentucky. It's going to be a full-out crowd. It's going to be loud. Uh, we're more on defense. So our defense is going to have to communicate well, uh, which we talked about earlier. The captains will have them locked in. Um, and it'll be a real test. Uh, coming off the edge, applying pressure, and our – are our DBs up for the challenge? Uh, a quarterback, you know, um, who can who can throw it all over the field, hit, you know, twenty yards downfield outside the numbers. I mean, those throws are tough, and this guy can make them. So uh, it, we got to be covering uh, the guys all over the field. No, no throws unreachable for this guy. I've only seen a couple clips on 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 the Western Kentucky quarterback. I can't see. I say I've watched him play too much, but it seems like the kind of quarterback. He is reminds me of the Hawaii quarterback from recent years, Cole McDonald. And Cole McDonald, uh, I know that Army played a really close game um, and won a close game against Cole McDonald at West Point a few years back. Cole Christensen knocks down a pass in the end zone for the win, and then they played. Uh, um, yeah, they played Hawaii later at Hawaii, and the game was really crazy back and forth type of stuff. I think uh, in that 2019 season, um, that's that's who this guy reminds me a little bit of. Like you said, can make all the throws on the field has multiple weapons. He's not going to really zero in on one particular player. Um, so, I mean, you have to have everybody on the same page in coverage schemes, right? Because you don't want a guy to get away on, on a blown assignment and get away for a big play. Because, Steve, last week, right, Army's longest pass that they gave up was 16 yards. Their longest play of the game was 18 yards by Georgia State. They did not give up a big play of 20 yards or more in that game. So if they can keep every, but everything in front of them in this game, I think you'll see the same success that they had uh, against Georgia State. Yeah, no, and uh, I, get, I, I think they'll stretch the field against us, uh, trying to open up the middle. Uh, they'll definitely do rub routes with all their receivers, you know, to run the running gun. So there's going to be five wide receivers at some point uh, that are, you know, uh, rubbing each other off and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, more than anything, um, it, it's just going to be a, a great test. And it's at Mikey, which is nice. Um, I know I'm looking forward to watch the game uh, and, and just see how our guys kind of, you know, step up to the challenge on, on an offense that, that can put up a lot of points. 
Yeah, for those of you watching, going to be watching the game on TV, it's going to be on the CBS Sports Network. Now, it's going to be 1130 kickoff. It's not going to be the, tr the traditional noon kickoff. They're starting it at 1130. I think there's another Service Academy game going on on Saturday, I think, that um, Coach Munkin didn't want to talk. He said he has no interest in it at all going on in the, yeah. you know, I, I believe the game is in Annapolis. I could be wrong. Um, you know, the, the two other service academies are playing. And so, uh, uh, so I think that that means an early 1130 kick at a uh, Mikey um, just real quick. I just wanted to get in on those. You're talking about five wide receivers, right? And we talked about Andre Carter throughout this podcast, throughout, throughout tonight, but against Georgia state, when Georgia state split out trips to either side, Andre Carter was out there to be <laughs> a disruptor. You know, he was out there to disrupt, just bump off one of the receivers to maybe throw off a route or something like that. That's a, that's a great, that, that's, that's something that Steve, I wouldn't think of off on the fly, but that's something that they probably practiced, you know, numerous times in, in preparation for Georgia state. And that may help out um, this week against Western Kentucky. Well, I mean, uh, like you said, when you got a, when you got a gifted athlete, you got to use them in all of his capabilities. So, you know, he, he goes ahead and gives one bench press to a wide receiver, you know, untimes the route by, you know, a second or a second and a half. And then he goes and gets that third or cuts underneath of a route. So um, they obviously trust this kid to do a lot um, for the defense, and that's good. You you want to leverage that the athleticism in all your athletes. Um, so I'll, I'll be, you know, I, I'll be interested to see if he does something similar this week um, just because – the, the the most important thing is to not allow that quarterback to just sit back there and, and pick the right guy um, at the right time. Um, so, but you know, any combo of any of it will will be good. So, I I'll tell you what, it's a big weekend. Yeah, it, you know, hey, and, and and you know, everything that's going on in the world right now with the armed forces and um, you know Afghanistan and uh, the service academies um, still. You know, uh, wish nothing but luck. The Air Force and Navy, you know, 363 days out of the year. But there's two days where I'm just, I don't want to hear none of it. All right? And that's the one day uh, in November and the one day in December. <laughs> Ab -ab absolutely. Uh, real quick, um, we haven't really touched much on the offense in, the, in this podcast. So we'll yeah. give a little update on the quarterback situation. Ty here, Tyler played two drives. The opening two drives started the game. Looked like he took a hit maybe to the side of the leg or the hip and did not come back to the uh, game. Christian Anderson senior filled right in started games. I think it, he started five games for army in the, in the past yeah. and he came right in offense. Didn't really miss a beat with Christian. I mean, on this first play, the nose tackle kind of blew up the mesh and you thought, Oh, the Army was going to lose the ball, but I think Anthony Atkins came out of there with the ball, uh, crisis averted. And um, you look at Tyre Tyler's uh, status for Saturday, Coach Munkin said it might be determined on fr on Friday's practice. Um, I don't think he's practiced much this week. And Steve, as a player, if you especially playing quarterback, right? How many guys can practice on Friday as a quarterback, maybe for the first time this week live, and then go play on Saturday? You know, I, I, I think that maybe uh, Andrew, I'll, I'll let you answer that. No, I, I think it's very tough, especially if there's confidence in, in, in Christensen to, you know, to do this. So, uh, it, so I, I thought Anderson played great when he came in the game, uh, you know, was hitting throws, uh, definitely didn't miss a beat. Um, so, you know, I, I, I want to believe – uh, that they're interchangeable, right? Like, <laughs> I know it's not the truth because there's a reason why uh, Tyler was named the starter and everything. Uh, so I, I just hope, one, that, you know, they make the right decision for the kids' health. Um, you know, it's a long season. Yeah. You know, of course, you want to win them all. But uh, there's a lot, a lot of games to win this year. Um, and if he's banged up a little bit, uh, but he can play, go ahead, put him in there. But, uh, yeah, not practicing all week. Uh, even after the the million times you run the mesh, right? Uh, you know he's ran it more than anybody. It's still the timing each week that you need to get down because there's different keys, there's different reads, there's different defenses every single week. So I'll tell you what, though, I'm loving the the double two sixty up the gut. Uh, both of our fullbacks just big boys, rumbling, tumbling. Uh, I, it was one of the 
you know, you, you, I never, as a, as a linebacker, I never mind hitting the fast 220 pound running backs, fullbacks, right? I headed tackling, you know, Javorski Lane uh, from Texas A&M, who was yeah. 275 at fullback. Um, you know, Colin Mooney was absolutely no fun to tackle during uh, one-on-ones uh, at 235, 240, uh, running a four, you know, four-six. So uh, having a, having a, and the guys are quick. I mean, they got great feet. Uh, both fullbacks, great feet. Uh, you know, like uh, you know, you kind of have to in the triple option, but you know, they are. Big boys, and it, you could just tell that uh, Georgia State linebackers were just getting sick of getting 260 to the dome, uh, play after play, not knowing if he had the ball or not. It's like kind of like a wasted rep, right? You hit the fullback without the ball, you're like, God, that just cost me, you know, probably you know a headache or two. So, um, really, really great uh, one. I mean, I mean, we didn't even get to the outside much. You know, we we were so successful with. The, the midline or the QB follow or the mesh or the, you know, the quarterback keep, you know, just didn't pitch it. Um, so, you know, there weren't very many, you know, we had a couple toss plays, but we, we kept it basically fundamental triple option where it was fullback, quarterback, uh, quarterback follow, um, and, and a couple toss plays. So, um, we, when, you know, every game last year, um, you know, where we were able to, you know, middle, middle, you know, and then hit the pitch and open up. As soon as we opened up the the lane where we would start pitching successfully and getting 10, 12, 15 breaking off runs, I mean, our fullbacks would just break it open. Our quarterback follows would just break it open. Like, you have to respect the pitch. Um, but, you know, if you don't need it, if you got success, you run your bread and butter, and that's the mesh with the quarterback and the fullback. Yeah, I think the biggest um, outside plays, well, A.J. Howard had that one run, but it was a toss play, right? That second effort play where he got into the end zone uh, early in the game. And then Christian Anderson was really the most effective on the edge there, picking up like eight, nine, ten yards and moving the chains. And that's what he brings to the offense. He brings a little bit of elusiveness. And for he's able to get the, the extra yardage either after contact or making a guy miss. And in this offense, that's important, you know. So, um, and and you look at so if Tyler, um, what if his status is he's not going to be able to play? Jamel Jones came in the in the fourth quarter, threw a touchdown pass, you know, ran the offense pretty well. And then I really before we before we wrap this up, I really want to touch on Jabari Laws real quick. Jabari Laws, senior quarterback, hadn't played a game since November of 2019, and he gets the finals. Uh, two series, uh, last series against Georgia State, he's able to, you know, run the ball his first time. It was a six-yard gain. I'm like, wait, that's Jones, right? Nope. Number one comes out of the pile. Six-yard gain on the one of the first times he touches the ball, coming back from two knee injuries, two major knee injuries to Barry Laws. And, Steve, you know how tough that is. I mean, you've been through that. And when you're yeah. a quarterback and you have to do that, in, in this offense, in this offense to do that, and he took a lick on one of the plays, was dropped for a loss. Three guys stood over, stood over them. Poor sportsmanship by Georgia State, by the way. Um, he got right back up. You know, when he got right back, and when he got right back up, I know the sidelines went crazy for him because at the end of the at the end of the game, I don't know if you saw the locker room video on Brave Old Army team. I'm getting choked up here on Brave Old Army team with Jabari Laws on the shoulders of his teammates. It doesn't get better than that, Steve. Yeah, and um, you know, you lose you lose sight of it as as fans. Even I lose sight of it, and I and I live it. Um, these young men aren't just football players, right? They're they're future leaders of other young men that will most likely uh, be in battle, um, where they're gonna have to they're gonna have to continue the mission. Hurt. They're gonna have to come back from from something devastating, and I think that's one of the just special things about the academy sports um, in general, specifically, you know, the academy football rivalry is, you know, most of these guys um, in one way or the other will eventually be leading, uh, you know, high school, you know, football players that chose to go into combat arms. Um, and it's just that, that the brotherhood within the brotherhood um, type deal. It was really cool. You know, like you said, uh, I, I was a little shocked too when when Laws was in the game. But hey, you never know, right? That, like you just said, that position is a physical position, right? First, 
first game of the season, Tyler goes down, right? Like, hey, second string's in, right? Okay, hey, we got up by a little bit. We got to get work with you other guys because guess what? He's one more, He's one play away now. So, and, and Law's having the, the, the mental toughness um, to, you know, nobody, you know, nobody would have faulted him. Hey, I've had two knee injuries. I got to look out to become, I still got a commission as an officer so I can, you know, provide, you know, for my future family and, and have a career. Uh, nobody, nobody would have thought twice. They were like, yeah, you're making the, you're making a career. Just yeah, I mean, he's just a guy who I know is beloved by his teammates, as we saw. And now, um, you know, he worked his way up to be on the travel squad for this team. There's six guys, Steve, that can start at quarterback um, on this team. And two guys didn't even make the trip to Georgia State and, and Cade Ballard and Maurice Ballon. And those guys are going to dress for Army on uh, Saturday. And so they're going to be five, six, seven deep um, going into um, – going into this game against Western Kentucky guys. If you're uh, watching this podcast, we really appreciate it. You can, uh, you can get us on all major podcast platforms. We have a YouTube channel that is gaining subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button and please hit the like button for us. And uh, you'll find our coverage at black We're breaking down snap counts. We're breaking down um, uh, the game coming up against Western Kentucky. I'm going to write a little something on Anthony Atkins coming up before game time. So thanks for uh, joining us, Steve. We appreciate Steve Anderson uh, rejoining us tonight. And uh, we'll have Steve back on hopefully as a weekly um, weekly uh, for us. Uh, let's get Steve back on real quick. There he is. Sorry about that. No worries, man. I was just, I was just Woo! plugging in now. I was hoping that we can get you on on a weekly basis here and we can uh, do this and maybe we can get on some old grads. If we don't get on old grads and just shoot, shoot the, uh, shoot um, football uh, on these black nights and hopefully a successful season. Hopefully we can do that. Yeah, it's been no. great having you back tonight. Hey, Sal, this is great. This is uh, it brings you back. You know, this started six years ago, just on, just on SoundCloud, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to try to uh, get this going uh, weekly. You know, I love, love talking Army football um, and, and definitely look forward to it. Uh, I guess I'll leave it to you, Steve. You usually sign us off with the, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to you. You, you, you send us off here. <laughs> All right. Hey, be Western Kentucky.